Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another video. So in this video I'm going to be covering um, the installation of the Reef Octopus EXT 8000. So this is a uh, external protein skimmer uh, meant for huge aquariums, it's a light commercial protein skimmer and I'm going to be installing it on my 1000 gallon Mori eel and shark aquarium. Okay, so I'm going to get started with uh, putting the skimmer together and uh, here is the skimmer cup. Um, so one thing to so I wanted to note is that this is not the twisty style like the other skimmer I had. You actually have to push the cup into uh, onto the skimmer, so you have this little gasket here and obviously this can be a problem if you know, the skimmer cup is like full and you want to take it off the skimmer. You have to, you know, yank it off and it can lead to spillage. So I don't really like that kind of design. I like it when it just twists in and locks into place. But uh, this is how the skimmer was made. And like I mentioned earlier, so this was one piece of obviously just the lid and the cup itself. But this is also one piece. So in the pictures, this looks like it's like zip ties, but it's actually solid pieces of uh, acrylic. And uh, yeah, so this thing is one piece. Didn't have to do anything. This is how it came. Uh, it's a solid, uh, has a solid bottom underneath. Um, so that's really good. So yeah, let's get started with the installation. So the first thing I'm going to do is install this uh, bubble pump. Uh, this is a HY10000 S pump. And the way this installs is very simple actually. So you basically just uh, align the pump and then you're going to use uh, this connection piece here to basically connect the pump here to the skimmer um, bottom and also up here. And one thing I like to do is uh, before I put these gaskets uh, onto this skimmer, or actually, right after I put them on, I use some uh, loop tube, it's called. So it's a multi-purpose uh, lubricant. And uh, I just like to use it because it creates a better seal. Uh, it's kind of like Vaseline, so it's kind of an oily uh, material. But this will help, you know, uh, create a really good seal. So the pump is installed. Um, basically, not much to it. Make sure that I don't tighten them tighten one uh, you know connector all the way before I have the other one tightened so I just tighten every one every one of these uh, connectors a little bit at a time until it's all doesn't move anymore and I don't use any tools I just use my hand because if you use tools you tend to over tighten and pinch uh, the little gaskets and this is it for this side so this is ready to go now we're moving on to the other side and you do get uh, kind of an instruction manual, but I like, I'm more of a visual learner, so that's why I'm going through this uh, with you. And uh, again, we're going to be using this uh, lubricant for the gasket. And I'm going to do this uh, for all the gaskets, so I'm not going to show this anymore. So here's your more, here's, here's another gasket. So well, if you do this at home, uh, you know, be prepared to do it for all of them. And uh, so this right here is called the automatic drainage system. So this will connect right here, and then what you do is you usually have it in a closed position like this. Okay, and uh, if you ever want to drain the entire skimmer, then you will just uh, twist this and the, it will be completely emptied out, and then you can move it, or if you want to do a really deep clean, you know, that's when you would do that. The connector here is, I believe, a 5-8 uh, rubber hosing connector. Uh, so not PVC, just regular hose. The great thing about the design of this skimmer is that it uses all these unions. So in this case, for example, let's say you want the drainage to be on the other side, you just loosen the union, and turn it, and then you tighten it. So you can literally orient it whichever direction you want before you then fully tighten it. And you even have a union on the bottom. So let's say you want uh, the handle to be over here and the outlet over here you can do that as well if you want. Next up is the water inlet and this is a one inch uh, PVC barbed hose connector 
and this is basically where the uh, feed pump that you can choose, uh, whichever one you want to use, will fill this skimmer with water. And then this pump is going to create the bubbles. And then basically the bubbles will come to the top and then spill over the collection cup. Uh, so yeah, again, like I mentioned earlier, this is really great that you can choose which pump you use. And I'm going to be using a DC pump, so a pump that then I can control the power uh, up or down. And uh, that's that way I can fine tune the skimmer and you know increase the power of the skimmer as the animals like the giant mori in the back and uh, tessellata mori as they grow. Next, we are going to install this gate valve, and this is going to be uh, the first time where we will have to start gluing PVC together uh, because we have this two-inch union which will screw on top. And then in order to connect this gate valve onto the union, we need to use this uh, two inch piece of PVC, the label that for the letter A. So this one goes on here and then this goes on top. And uh, basically, yeah, that's how you install the gate valve. And for PVC glue, I'm going to be using um, medium clear PVC cement. So I do not want to use this uh, purple primer and purple glue because if they have, if they have any spillage, it's going to look really ugly and this is a very expensive skimmer. So the clear PVC will be invisible if I have any runoff and that will look a lot nicer. Okay, the gate valve is installed and basically what the gate valve will do is you can turn this clockwise to shut down the water flow. If you don't, if you want to reduce the water flow or you just uh, do it turn it the other way to increase it, but like I said, I'm going to be using a, a variable speed pump so I can actually control the flow of the water through the pump controller. And some people may say, you know, why don't you use the purple um, primer and glue combination? Uh, isn't it a lot stronger? It is stronger, but this is not a high pressure um, application. So this single medium clear PVC cement is uh, sufficient enough to bond these pieces together. Uh, obviously with PVC, one thing you have to keep in mind that you do apply it to the inside of the coupler and to the outside of the piece, PVC, and when you stick it in, you turn it uh, 45 degrees and then you push the fitting all the way in so that the uh, glue gets applied to the entire surface area. And then you hold it for like 20 seconds and then it should be good to go. The next thing we are going to install is the silencer, and that is basically this uh, long piece of pipe here. And this will connect right there at the bottom of the base. Uh, so you wiggle it through the holder, okay? And then all you have to do is just push it in. And then don't forget to attach this piece to the top. All right. And this actually has a hole. I guess to allow air in and to keep it silent. Next, we're going to install some soft tubing and uh, we're going to install this air hose. And this air hose connects to the Venturi and from there it will connect to the silencer. If you're having trouble uh, sliding this hose over, you can use a heat gun and soften the rubber tubing, then it'll make it really easy. Or you can use some of this, uh, you know, lubrication um, inside the tubing or uh, put it over the connector and will slide on really quickly. Um, the company did not send out any clamps to tighten these in, so I will have to check if there's any leakage, you know, air leaking through, but I don't think this, that would be a problem if, even if that did happen. Um, but yeah, well, something to keep in mind. So next I'm going to be installing this overflow hose. And basically uh, this skimmer has an overflow protection. So as you can see here, if the water was to rise all the way up to, you know, inching towards the very top, would, the water would then flow through this emergency drain that will come out here. And according to this diagram, this emergency drain goes to the uh, automatic drainage system, which is this uh, piece right here. And that will make sense because then you can just drain it out. But in this skimmer, the uh, emergency, emergency drain goes into here. Uh, you know, as you can see in the diagram here, it's the same piece as the silencer. It goes right here. And that will mean it will go to the pump that pushes air this way. So very interesting. I'm not sure if this is a design flaw. I will have to ask uh, Reef Octopus about that. 
Okay, next we're going to be installing the non-siphon function to the gate valve. And basically how this works is you have a PVC connection piece, and then you have this piece, which has an uh, opening on the top. Okay, and then you're going to connect the non-siphon bar on top. And then uh, don't forget to put this on the very top. And basically what this does is it allows air to go in. So when you turn off the skimmer, you don't have a back siphon from the main tank overflowing the skimmer and overflowing, you know, your floors. Uh, when it comes to the stand for this big skimmer, I discovered this uh, stainless steel uh, heavy-duty food prep work table. Um, I got it on Amazon. It was um, $114.99 at the time of the recording of this video. Uh, so this is great because the length is exactly the length of uh, the skimmer from here, including the pump. And the width is exactly the width of the skimmer. And then I, uh, underneath I have you know, a shelf for the uh, collection of the uh, skimmer. Uh, so I don't have to constantly empty out this cup, especially since I cannot turn it and release it. I have to like wiggle it out, uh, you know, and that could cause spillage. So this will be a much more elegant solution. Okay, I just want to go over uh, one caveat when it comes to this protein skimmer, and that is um, that the tubing that is supplied with the skimmer is Schedule 80 tubing. And most people uh, who go to like Lowe's or Home Depot, they purchase Schedule 40 tubing. Uh, so the problem is if you run out of uh, tubing uh, from what you get supplied with the skimmer and you want to use your own, um, the schedule for uh, schedule 80 fittings, even though they are both uh, two inch, or rated a two inch, they're actually not compatible. So it's not a tight fit. The interior is a little bit bigger for some reason, and vice versa. Here's a schedule 40 uh, connector and schedule 80 pipe, and it doesn't go inside either. So what I had to do. Um, in order to connect a Schedule 80 piping with a Schedule 40 piping is to use a rubber coupler. And this is what you see here. So the skimmer is now in place, as you can see. And we have this long tube, and I didn't have enough tubing to make it all the way to this uh, two inch um, inlet. So basically I'm, I use this rubber coupling to connect a Schedule 80 pipe uh, provided with the skimmer with the Schedule 40 pipe. And I absolutely, I absolutely love these uh, rubber couplings uh, because if you connect two uh, pieces of pipes and you know they're slightly off, they're not perfectly level, you can still get a really nice seal. Um, also, if you have to uh, extend a pipe, uh, let's say this was you know put uh, or solid in place and uh, you wanted to replace a crack here, right? Uh, you get a new piece of pipe here, but you cannot really fit a coupler because let's say you cannot move the pipe any further. Uh, you can simply uh, install a pipe that is uh, right at the uh, where the other one ends. Slide this over, right? Install this pipe and then slide this back in in place and tighten it up. And you have a really nice seal. So just one caveat. And then here we have the uh, discharge hose which is going into this uh, container and I also purchased, I'm not sure if you can see that, but a quick connect, a uh, quick disconnect. So I can simply uh, push this and then take this outside to drain it and then uh, reinstall uh, the drain tubing. So I'm going to turn on the skimmer for the very first time to check for any leaks. And obviously, uh, for this type of skimmer, the first pump that you have to turn on is the feed pump. So the pump that feeds the water into the skimmer. And then when you have sufficient amount of water, then you will turn on the uh, pump that creates the bubbles. And the way I have installed this protein skimmer is, compared to what most people do, uh, most people, they actually have, uh, you know, the mechanical filtration, which are the filter socks here, and then the, uh, filter uh, foam, and uh, then they have the skimmer right afterwards. Uh, but in my setup, I have, uh, you know, filter socks, uh, foam, and then I have, uh, so basically the water 
once it gets into this uh, first area, it's being slowed down a lot. So this is almost, there's almost no flow. And uh, this bacteria that lives in this area is the anaerobic bacteria. So the bacteria that lives in ox low oxygen, low flow areas uh, to remove the nitrates. Okay, so not ammonia and not nitrite, but the nitrates. So that's why um, what I have decided to do, I installed the feed pump right in the first chamber, so where the water is, you know, the most dirty. So obviously a lot of water will go through the filter sock and will be filtered there. But I didn't want this feed pump to be coming from the very end where the water is, you know, low in oxygen. I want it to be in this first area because then it feeds the most dirty water, water into the skimmer, it gets skimmed. And then it, the uh, clean water goes out here and then the pipe goes all the way to the back where the water is then being pumped into this bead filter which uh, you know you have a lot of oxygen already going on in this bead filter but you know the water that's coming out from the skimmer is also very high in oxygen so this uh, filter there is the filter where the bacteria lives that needs oxygen and high flow to convert ammonia to nitrite and nitrite to nitrate and then the water goes back into the aquarium so yeah, it's a little bit different setup. Most people have it, you know, mechanical. Uh, then they have something like this or any other filter that uh, you know remove or converts ammonia to nitrite and nitrite to nitrate. Uh, have the skimmer in that area, and then they have uh, you know the low uh, oxygen environment for the nitrate removal. But in this case, it's a little bit uh, different, but it will work nonetheless. Okay, moment of truth. Hopefully, no leaks. We'll plug in the feed pump for the very first time. Uh, we can see the skimmer filling up with water. <coughs> and once enough water is inside the skimmer, then I can turn on this pump. You can see water is filling up this pump as well. Everything Looking great so far, no leaks as far as I can tell. And once I see water going through this pipe into the outlet, then I can actually turn on the skimmer. And then we can see uh, what the skimming performance of this huge protein skimmer is. All right, in the back, we can now see water coming out. So we can see that there, a little bit nicer. <laughs> so now it is time to turn on the bubbler pump. So this should create a huge amount of bubbles. Oh, there we go. Wow. Uh, this is a whole other level of skimming. So obviously this uh, skimmer needs time to break in, right? But obviously this is a huge upgrade to what I had before. And uh, yeah, so far no leaks at all. I will uh, we'll be checking. I'm also using these uh, leak detectors to you know, make a really loud beep and also notify me on my phone. And uh, we'll be placing them all over, but uh, I don't see any leaks. And this is not a very high you know, pressure uh, you know, situation. So that's why I used the uh, clear PVC. I didn't use the primer and the glue because uh, it wasn't necessary. So yeah, uh, I will let this break in and then I uh, will pick it up in uh, maybe in a few days. Okay, time to wrap up this video. So uh, let's take a look at the skimmer. So the skimmer has been running for two weeks now. And uh, yeah, let's go over my experience so far. So the skimmer is actually still being broken in. And uh, let's first talk about uh, this emergency hose uh, that I uh, mentioned earlier. So when the skimmer goes up uh, and you know start to overflow, you have then this emergency tubing which will then go down here 
And initially, I didn't really understand how this works. But basically, uh, this bubble pump actually sucks bubbles in. So this is an air tubing. And then, uh, you know, chops them up and then puts them back into the skimmer. So when this overflows, it basically adds a mixture of liquid into this uh, pump and goes in straight into the uh, skimmer. So in my case, uh, this really never happens because I am draining the cup already this way, all the way, you know, into a five gallon container. And then down there, I have a, um, what is it called, a, a, le a leak detector. So this uh, is actually, you know, full. Then this will, it will overflow and then we'll go into this top and then the leak detector turns on. And uh, yeah, this works really well. And what else? So this gate valve right here, this is to regulate how high or low uh, you know, the bubble will go. And this is very, uh, very fine when it comes to the tuning. So if you want to raise it, let's say from here up to here, you have to like turn it like multiple times. So it's very precise allows you from to go from here maybe a millimeter higher just by you know making a, a three-quarter turn so this is really great that you have this uh, precision control uh, another thing i want to mention is uh, let's say you are somebody who runs your skimmer only at certain times so let's say only at night for example uh, it is important that you have the air pump and the pump that feeds the skimmer with the actual water that you have them on separate timers and that is because if you have both of them on one, let's say you have a, a split cable, like a Y cable, and connect both to the single uh, smart plug, and both come up at the same time, uh, this skill, uh, pump could potentially uh, wear out prematurely. And that is because, you know, the, the uh, skimmer is going to fill up with water, you know, and then this uh, bubble pump is going to create the bubbles. But if both turn on at the same time, this is empty, and then this is going to run, you know, on nothing, and it's going to wear out the pump. So, uh, what the way I have it set up is that the uh, pump that feeds the skimmer comes on at like 10 p.m., and then this will come on a minute later at 10:01, because at that time the skimmer is already uh, halfway full, and then I don't have to worry about this wearing out. Um, another thing I want to mention is that this bubble pump is actually really loud. So if I turn it off, you can tell the difference. It's super quiet now. Like you, you don't hear this pump at all. So I'm going to turn off the feed pump. All right, you don't hear any difference between before and after. All right, turn it back on no difference but when I turn this on it is loud so that is a consideration when you have this skimmer running in your living room for example like I have now that is also a reason why I have it run only at night and uh, yeah other than that uh, it does create a huge amount of oxygen that goes into the tank I can tell by the uh, pH that is uh, a lot higher or not a lot by a couple of, of points uh, because you know the more oxygen in the water compared to CO2, you know the higher the pH, so that really helps. Uh, when it comes to energy consumption, so this is one point I want to make. So this is a uh, VCP 5000 pump, and it runs at 39 watts in the highest setting. So at 100%, it's at 39 watts, and I can show you here the skimmer pump, the electricity that it uses every day. Uh, is around 0 0.44 like 0 0.44 right but this pump that creates the bubbles uses a lot more electricity so here's the bubble pump I named it and here you see 1 1.77 1.74 so it's about more than four times the amount of electricity than this uses so I almost purchased the next model up, which is the EXT 9000, which, com which comes with two of these. So if you ever decide to go with that one, uh, you know, make sure that you understand how much energy this is going to run you. So, uh, like I said, this one uses, I think it's in kilowatts per hour, so 1.77 to 1.74 kilowatts per hour if you run it for like 12 hours, so double that if you run it continuously. And that is only one pump so double that again if you have the EXT 9000 
So uh, yeah, just to keep that in mind. Other than that, it creates really great bubbles, uh, but it's still actually breaking in. I can tell you uh, that because you know, if I leave it like this, you know, you have water dripping in. But then at some point, it almost suddenly goes all the way up and fills up this uh, container at the bottom. So for example, this morning at 6 a.m., I got an alert that this was overflowing and then the leak detector turned on. So I had to come get up and turn this off on a Sunday. <laughs> so that wasn't too well, but uh, too great. But yeah, uh, I don't know exactly how long it will take to fully break in. I think about a month. And that is if you run it continuously. So maybe it will take me six weeks or so. But other than that, it works really well. Um, yeah, I have no other complaints. I mean, uh, yeah. So if you have an aquarium big as this, a thousand gallons or more, I can recommend this skimmer. And uh, just make sure you know what you're getting, how much it costs you know, to purchase, and then how much it costs to run. And there are a few quirks that come with this skimmer. Other than that, it's really great. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.